I mean, Ballard second take is Notre Dame is not out at 11-1 and one in 2022. I mean, you can say that Notre Dame is a dark horse coming into 2022. Your thoughts? Well, here's the thing. Their strength of schedule right now is huge because – you have to open up. Here's the scenario. You open up with Ohio State. You have Marcus Freeman in his first year. Okay. You open up at Ohio State. You play teams like North Carolina, BYU, Syracuse on the road, which can be tough. You got a game against Clemson. You got a game against Clemson. That's neutral field. And you got a game... Uh, actually, that game's in South Bend at home, the Clemson game is. Um, and you got a game at USC. So they could drop the Ohio State game and win out, or they could beat Ohio State and they could ultimately lose to a team like Clemson or USC. Um, they still would have at least one or two quality wins on their schedule. Right. I mean – the thing that kills Notre Dame, in my opinion, is they do not have a conference championship to go to. Yes, yes they – I mean, they have some – they would have to, almost have to, win at Ohio State and lose to a team like Clemson or vice versa. They would have – I mean, if they lose to Ohio State, which in my opinion they will, but – Let's just say, for Notre Dame's sake, they lose to Ohio State. They would have to beat Clemson by more than, in my opinion, more than 17 points to even get recognized. I think if they beat Ohio State, and I'm talking about 10 or more points, and then they go around and lose to Clemson, by like three points or something like that, maybe that take will be um, pretty good, you know? Yeah, I understand. So it's just really hard whenever you're an independent coming into, I don't know, going into the playoffs. I mean, they expect you to go undefeated. I mean, you make your own schedules, and uh, you don't have to follow – a quote-unquote conference. You don't have to go to a conference championship. You are the champions of your independency every single year. That's true. But um, I don't like, I will say, what I don't like is that they automatically put a undefeated um, independent team in because I think that's kind of dumb. But carry on. Well, well, let's talk about that for a minute. I mean. I I kind of disagree with you. I mean, if they have a schedule that's a little bit difficult, I mean, obviously being an independent, you're not going to schedule a really gruesome, hard, you know, teams, you know, to play. But if you go undefeated, you deserve to be in the playoffs. I mean, we saw last year Cincinnati. I want to ask you, Ballard, do you believe Cincinnati was uh, – the right pick to be number four in the playoffs? Uh, I mean, I'm trying to remember first off who else there would have been to take the number four spot, but I mean, they had, they had Oklahoma state, but they were, they had two losses because they were four yards shy of uh, winning that game versus Baylor. But then you had, a two-loss Baylor that actually won the uh, Big 12 championship. So in that case, you would you would knock out uh, uh, Oklahoma State. And then you had um, – You had uh, – The Pac-12. The Pac-12. I mean, you had a four-loss Pac-12 champion, a four-loss Pac-12 champion – I That's mean, not getting in over Cincinnati for sure, but um, I, mean, I, I guess you could have made a case for, um, for Baylor. You you could have made a case, I think. 
I mean, to me, if you go two losses, that's automatic. You're out in the playoffs. Yeah. I, I agree there. I do agree. But do you honestly think Baylor would have put a better game than Cincinnati did in that playoffs? I think Baylor would have given a, Alabama a better game. You think so? I mean, 27 to 6. I mean, it, it, you think it's going to be closer than that? I mean, we've seen in previous years where Michigan State got blown out and by Alabama. I mean, we've seen Ohio State get blown out by Clemson. I mean, you, we've seen um, all these college football playoffs. I mean, you've seen last year Michigan got blown out by Georgia. Yeah. So, it w- would, would it really have been a closer game? Maybe not. I mean, I think it depends. I mean, you, there's no telling with these games. I mean, half of the – more than half of the games have been blown out, um, you know, not that close, you know, in the CFP um, history. So, uh, maybe you make a point there. Georgia Tech, Yellow Jack, Notre Dame will lose two games, Ohio State and Clemson. But I hope Notre Dame beats the Suck Nuts. Your opinions and thoughts on that? I think they can't do anything worse than 10 and 2. I think those games, I think in between those two games right there, they're set up for success. Now, if I had to say they, they had a shot at one of them, it's Clemson. Uh, but if they drop both of them, it wouldn't surprise me. Now, here's a question for you. Um, you know, we see a first-year head coach in Marcus Freeman. I mean, you're picking them to go 10-2, and first-year head coach. Um, you know, you're saying at worst 10-2. and two. Um, So you're saying that – are you saying that Marcus Freeman is, is going to have better success than Brian Kelly did coming in, or are you – saying that Marcus Freeman has Brian Kelly t- talent and he's going to make it happen. No, I think he's got the Brian Kelly talent, at least for this year. I think that he can take advantage of that. Um, Notre Dame right now has one of the top classes, by the way, for 2023. So, I mean, his recruiting is still pretty good. Uh, but we got to see him work his own talent on the field, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, the only game that we saw him actually coach in was the bowl game, and we really can't, you know, judge a head coach based off of one bowl game, people sitting yeah. out and stuff like that. So you can't really judge somebody off of one game. Um, do you think Marcus Freeman – now this is the Touchdown Tuesday show where we do bowl takes here. Um, just a friendly reminder, but uh, do you think Brian Kelly or Marcus Freeman is the better coach down at Notre Dame? I th- I think Brian Kelly, honestly. I mean, I hate I, if I'm a Notre Dame fan, I'm pretty pretty hurt that they let him go. Um, I think that it was a big mistake. I mean, they gave him the money at LSU. You're going to take the job, but I, I I, don't see where there was error for Brian Kelly. Do you? No, I don't, and I also believe that Brian Kelly's a really good head coach. And, you know, speaking of dark horses in college football, um, I do believe LSU is definitely a dark horse coming in um, to uh, 2022.